Alright, now I don't have the sandwich boards cut yet. Um, so you just have to imagine the sandwich just not on boards here. Um, now I've made a couple mistakes. One, I put these holes, the small hole and the big hole, too close to the gasket and irregularities in the gasket cutting and positioning make it so that those that the holes are being covered up. So I had to snip out corners. Now these, uh, to make so the holes can cover up. Now these fish pond liner gaskets are pretty thick and they're tough and resilient, springy. One of the problems I had before with uh, just using PVC gaskets was that uh, every time I go through a heat cycle, the everything would expand and squish the gaskets a little bit and when it would uh, cool off it would leak. Now I tightened it down three times. I don't know if it would have eventually stopped leaking but my plates were irregular and I got shorts across the plates. So this time I'm adding this fish pond liner is going to do two things. One, it'll, three things actually, it'll keep the uh, sandwich board from touching the plate in case the sandwich board isn't perfectly flat it won't distort the plate. Um, it'll give me uh, space out away from this plate so I don't have to put the fill hole exactly lined up with this. I can put the fill hole anywhere I want but first I'm going to put it right in the center so the water will flow in and it'll just flow over to the corner go through that hole. Now that the air, the HHO hole will go right here right in line with these holes. So I'm going to show you how it's assembled here. I haven't taken the protective cover off here yet. And I also haven't flattened these plates completely. So it's a little bit of a pain to line these up and get them nice and flat. Or not flat, lined up so that um, you know, they're not all jagged. And these PVC gaskets, there's, this is a double layer right here. You can't see it, but there's a double layer. They stick together and they're pretty hard to lay out. So I, I kept them I already laid them out. I'm not going to go through that again. But uh, you have to be careful when you lay them out so that they're laying smooth and they don't have any wrinkles in them. That one seemed to have a little bit of a wrinkle. So I can separate it out a little bit. Lay it back down. And uh, you won't be able to see it from over there probably, but I've nipped out the corner here so that water can come in. Now, this gasket right here is only 10 thousandths of an inch thick. That's sitting on top. The water will come through that hole under that gasket and flow out into this area. Flow over here and come back through the other way. Now it's important that the water flows under the gasket. If you had the water coming in this way and tried to flow over it, this is so flexible and when it gets hot, it's going to be even more flexible. It'll seal that up right like a valve, and nothing will go through. But if water's coming through this way, it's not going to stop it. Water will be able to come through. Even if it lays up against the plate like it's doing now, there's still going to be a little bit of a crack here and here to allow that water to come through. At least that's the theory. So, nipped out the corners. The uh, holes are alternating, the vinyl gasket, the double gasket alternates so that it allows the water to go through but hopefully not the voltage leakage. I made another design change right in the middle. I've decided to cut these off. I haven't done it yet. They're superfluous sitting out there and it's just one more way to have a short. So I decided to cut them off. I'll do that as I'm working on straightening them. Now here's another difference coming up. Uh, every time you have a hole, top or bottom, you have a chance of voltage leakage. So, uh, I'm using five neutral plates. That's a nice odd number. So, the middle plate, I just left the holes out. There's no holes at all in the middle plate. And uh, the water will flow in from both sides to the middle. You know, it'll just you know, work its way up through the plates and it there is no hole in the middle on the top too, so that any gas will flow up and out through the top two holes. So I'm going to have two feed lines in the bottom and two exit lines on the top. I figure with no holes, at least that'll stop 
No, one less chance for voltage leakage. Now, when you flip over to the other side, you have to keep in mind that the water is not flowing this way anymore. It's flowing this way. So you have to make sure your your flaps are positioned in such a way so the water can get out, and that won't uh, flip back there and act like a valve. So that's about all there is to it, um, except for putting the sandwich boards together. Uh, uh, for me, it was real difficult keeping all this straight, making sure I have the holes on the right side, and they alternate, and with this brush stainless steel and smooth on the other, making sure the brush stainless steel is always the same side. That way, uh, from what I've heard, uh, the negative side is the one you want to have textured. So I'm setting this up so that the negative side will have the textured side on it. And I can reverse the polarity and try it the other way and see if it makes any difference. So here we have the positive. Now this is the negative plate. Then we have another set of gaskets for spacers. These will add, give some springiness to the gasket set, so hopefully that will keep that tight. won't leak and space that out. I can, I can put my fill tubes down in here where it would be convenient. Alright, so the next step is to make some sandwich boards. Uh, still have to flatten the plates. And then I'll put it together. Probably have to make a run to the hardware store. I don't have all the fittings I need to put this together yet.